guys, I'm Patrick from Frame.io, and today we're gonna to be talking about the brand new Final Cut Pro 10.4.7. One of the biggest things that this release does for us is it gives us access to metal all the way through Final Cut Pro 10, which will on any Mac really improve performance, but it's going to especially change performance when using a Mac Pro. We now have the ability to use up to 28 cores of a CPU through metal in Final Cut Pro 10 for things like rendering, playing back effects, and exporting. Also in 10.4.7, we now have the ability to choose which GPU is going to do the heavy lifting when it comes to our renders and our exports. So if you've got that super beefy eGPU, or maybe you're on the Mac Pro and have one of those MPX modules with the Radeon Pro 2 Duo, now you can use it with Final Cut Pro 10. Now with Catalina, we have the ability to use Sidecar with Final Cut Pro 10. With Sidecar, you have the ability to do things like add your viewer, browser, timeline, or even workflow extensions to an iPad so that you can open up additional space on your primary monitor. Now, you don't have to just use Sidecar as a secondary monitor. You can, in fact, put the entire Final Cut Pro 10 window on an iPad using Sidecar. This means that as long as you have a computer that's powerful enough, you can take an Apple Pencil and your iPad and go sit on a couch and edit in Final Cut Pro 10 from an iPad. One of my favorite little things that's come in 10.4.7 is the fact that when I'm color grading in HDR, I am no longer limited to just doing an RGB parade or an RGB overlay. I can now actually use my luminance waveforms, which is the primary way that I like to grade and actually one of the larger reasons why I haven't been doing a whole lot of HDR inside of Final Cut Pro 10. In addition to that tool, I have the ability to view HDR in the viewer in Final Cut Pro 10 as long as I'm on Catalina. That's right, you're not limited to SDR. You have the ability in Final Cut Pro 10.4.7 to play back actual HDR content in your viewer. And because of the way that Catalina handles HDR, as I change the brightness of my screen or I change screens, Final Cut will change how it's mapping the HDR to that viewer. So instead of being stuck at 1,000 nits for monitoring HDR, if I'm dimming my screen or I'm using a different screen that doesn't support 1,000 nits, then I still have the ability to see my standard dynamic range and then the additional HDR range above that. Another great tool for working in HDR in Final Cut 10.4.7 is the new HSL color mask. Now, for the longest time, we've been using a 3D color mask, but when you're working in HDR, something that's even more helpful is the ability to select what part of the luminance range you want to affect. The luminance range in the HSL here will make this significantly easier, and it gives you the ability to choose what kind of roll-off you have when you're making those adjustments. Now, you might say, but why don't you just use curves? Well, that's a great question. With curves, you do have a lot of flexibility, but using this method, you now have the ability to select a range and change the contrast within that range using shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can actually adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights of your highlights, which gives you a lot of flexibility. So despite the fact that 10.4.7 isn't a major, major feature release, we do have a whole lot under the hood that's going to help us when it comes to general performance and working in things like HDR. 